Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Welcome, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. So we are going to start another day of this week, and we have um, left maybe five days, I guess. It's almost time for the ending of the course. So, so we are in um a, in some days to finish this course, but it was really amazing. Now we are going to continue with this week. And we have the day two of this week and we are going to end the topic of verb tense. And then we are going to enter another topic that are the time phrases which we can use to begin the uh, sentences when we are talking about this, um, this topic of verb tense or to create some sentences using those uh, words or phrases at the beginning of the sentences. But now we are going to continue with the topic of the verb tense and we are going to um, see the other uh, parts of the tenses that we were uh, studying yesterday and the last week. And we are going to continue with the present tense and then we are going to continue or end with the future tense and the four uh, tenses that we have in the future. So we are going to uh, continue with this topic because it's time to end this part of the topic. And then we are going to uh, continue with uh, the other topic that we are going to develop tonight. So this, the, this was the uh, present perfect tense. And we have the formula. So now we are going to continue with the present continuous because it's the number um, three of the tenses of the present. So we are going to end the present. Then we are going to talk about the future. And then we are going to talk about the time phrases to use when we are using these uh, verb tenses when we are uh, talking in English or writing in English because it is necessary to know. So we are going to continue with the present continuous. And it says that the present continuous verb tense indicates that an action or condition is happening now frequently and may continue into the future. So these tense indicate indicates that an action or condition is happening now in this moment. That an action frequently and may continue into the future. Para este eh, tiempo o esta estructura es una acción o una condición que está pasando en este preciso momento frecuente y que puede continuar o va a continuar en el futuro. So, the present continuous formula. Here we have the formula and it says, we need the verb to be that we already know that is um, is and are. Then we need the verb in present participle. And we have the example. Aunt Christine is warming 
the car while Scott looks for his new So we have the example and we have the structure um, in this place. So we are going to mark this one is warming. So this is the uh, structure that we are going to use for this um, tense in present. So it says, Aunt Christine is warming the car while Scott looks for his new leather coat. La tía Cristina está calentando, ¿verdad? El auto mientras Scott busca su eh, abrigo, su nuevo abrigo de cuero. So this is an action that is happening in this moment, but also it can um, continue in the future because she is warming the car. But we don't know how many time Scott will um, spend looking for the new leather coat. So then we have um, the present continuous is a way to convey an act, any action or condition that is happening right now frequently and may be ongoing. It adds energy and action to writing and its effect help reader understand when the action is happening. Imagine Aunt Christine has surprised her nephew Scott for his birthday and is going to take him out to his favorite restaurant, Polly's Pancake Dinner. If I wanted to tell the story after it happened, I used the past tense. And we say they waited at the red light and Scott worried that might miss their reservation. That is in the past tense. But what I really want to convey is how the event unfolds, showing the action at its happening. They are sitting at Scott's favorite booth, the one with the sparkling red plastic seats for how long? We don't know, but we do know they are sitting there right now. So in this case, when we are going to um, tell a story or tell a situation, uh, we want to use this kind of tense and in this case, we are going to use the present continuous because we are going to tell how the uh, action is happening right now. So in the example, we were saying that we can use the past to talk about something that happened uh, in the past, but now uh, people want to know what is happening right now. So in this case, we are going to use the present continuous to explain what is happening in this moment in that is relevant for the uh, explanation of the situation. So also we have that in the formula, we have to be um, is R and the verb in present participle. But when we want to use the present continuous on when we are going to use it, we are going to use the present continuous with the appropriate to be verb and a dynamic verb. A dynamic verb shows action and or process. In this case, we are going to use the action um, verbs or the dynamic verb because they show the action. So when we are not going to use the present continuous tense, we are not going to use the present continuous with a steady verbs. A steady verbs show a state of being that does not show qualities of change. These verbs can stay in the simple present. So we are going to mark these um, rules in this place. When to use the present continuous. But I want to make like this. So in this case, we are going to use the present continuous with dynamic verbs and when not to use it. And in this case, he said, we are not going to use it with the steady verbs.
So in this case, we're going to mark the difference between the dynamic verbs and the steady verbs. The dynamic verbs are those verbs that um, explain about an action or a process, and we can use it to show that because they are performing something, they are performing an action. But with the uh, steady verbs are verbs that don't show uh, an action. And in this case is talking about emotion, possession, and task. And none of these should use the present continuous form. Para determinar ¿verdad? la diferencia entre los verbos dinámicos y los estáticos, es que los verbos dinámicos son aquellos que nos muestran acciones y procesos. Y los eh, verbos estáticos son aquellos que nos demuestran emoción, pensamientos y posesión. Así que con los estáticos, con esos verbos estáticos, no vamos a usar el present continuous, pero con los dynamic verbs sí vamos a utilizar el present continuous. But oh, we have an exception for the rule. Some verbs can be both dynamic and stative. Think about the verbs to be and to think. It is dynamic form to verb to be can show action. In this case, the verb to be is talking about the being or, or uh, some like emotion or possession. But in this case, it's also dynamic because it represents an action. So we have the example. Um, Sarah, Scott's little sister, is being bold by ordering the jalapeño chipotle pancake. So in that case, it is that uh, showing an action because it is telling that uh, this girl is doing something. But in an, its steady form, the verb to be is outward if conjugate in the present continuous. Sarah is being a tall teenager who loves her food spicy and her sports dangerous. So in that case, we need to be very, um, we have to read the sentence that we are creating because in some cases, it is not uh, the, the correct form to use the verb to be because it is dynamic, uh, but also they are steady, but we need to be very careful with that. So we are going to have some examples more and we have the common construction in the present continuous tense. So we are going to do it like examples to see the difference with the a common dynamic verbs to use in this um, co present continuous. So we have here, we are going to do it like this. One, two, three, four. And four. So we have here the pronoun because we are going to use it at the beginning of the sentence. Then we have the verb to be. Then we have the common and dynamic verbs. And we have the present continuous construction. Present and continuous construction. Using those elements, we have I, she, he, and it, we, you, and they. So we have here the structure for the verb to be. We have am, um, is, and are. Then we have the examples for these verbs. We have to write. Then we have to watch. And we have to walk. So we are going to transform those uh, verbs into the present continuous construction. So in this case, we are going to use it like this. I am writing. We are using the verb to be. Then we are going to use the verb in ing form. 
Then we have the next one that is he, she, it, and we are going to use it like this. She is watching. And we have the sentence. And the last one, they are walking. So that is very simple because in this case, we are going to use the subject or the pronouns, the uh, verb to be, and the dynamic verb with the ing form or the ending. And we have some examples here or the, um, the steady verbs that we are not going to use with this structure. So we are going to see some examples of these words that we are not going to use with this uh, structure. So. So we have the examples. We have three categories in this case. We have the opinion verbs, we have the ownership verbs, and we have the emotion verbs. Tenemos de opinión de eh, que nosotros somos como los dueños, ¿verdad? De que algo nos pertenece y de las emociones. In the opinion verbs, we have deserve, merecer, known, eh, eh, saber, ¿verdad? O conocer, recognize, reconocer, understand, es entender. So in those cases, we are not going to use them in the uh, present continuous construction because it sounds weird when we are using in that situation. Then in the ownership verbs, we have own, belong, need, and possess. Then we have the emotion verbs, feel, hate, love, and sound. In those cases, we are not going to use it with the present continuous tense. Now, we are going to have the last one of the present uh, tenses, and we have this one that is the present perfect continuous. In this one, it says that the present perfect continuous, it's also known as the present perfect progressive tense, and it shows that something started in the past and is continued at the present time. So in this case, it's something that began in the past and continue in the present. So it is, it shows, I mean, it shows that something started, started in the past and is continuing at the present time. And we have also the, um, the formula and it says we need has or have been plus 
the present participle. That is the root plus the ing form. And we have some examples. I have been reading War in Peace for a month now. So in this case, we are talking about something that began in the past and continue in the present. In this case, it's talking about reading something. Um, in these cases, we are going to use this um, tense because we are uh, not doing it in one day. Maybe it is possible. It, um, it exists people that read a book in one day, but in that case, it's very, very extraordinary. And in this case, when we are reading something slowly and have our time to read, and we are doing for um, uh, maybe after the work because we are going to um, use it as, as an action that make us feel better. In this case, we are going to say, I have reading for in peace for a month now. In este caso, estamos hablando de acciones que comenzaron en el pasado y que continúan en el presente, como en el ejemplo. He estado leyendo Guerra y Paz desde hace un mes, por ejemplo. Entonces, yo comencé hace un mes y todavía lo estoy haciendo. Action that begin in the past and continue in the present. And we say that in this sentence, using the present perfect continuous, verb tense conveys that reading war and peace is an activity that began sometime in the past and is not yet finished in the present, which is understandable in this case given the length of Tolstoy's wait time. In this case, it's talking about uh, how long the story is. So it is um, something that we can understand that it can be finished in just one week, maybe, because it is very long story. Recently and lately are words that we often find with verbs in the present perfect continuous tense. So we have recently, And lately, are words that we often find with verbs in the present perfect continuous. Presently and lately are very common words that we can use in this kind of structures. It says that not all verbs are compatible with continuous action. Some example of such verbs are to be, to arrive and to own. Siempre existen verbos que no van a ser compatibles con estas estructuras. Y en este caso tenemos el verbo to be, to arrive, and to own. No son muy compatibles con, este, eh, con esta estructura o con este tense. This is the last of the present tense. And now we are going to develop the future tense. That is the last part of this topic. So we have the future tenses. And we have four. Number one, simple future. Number two, future perfect. Number three, future continuous. And number four, future perfect continuous. So we have four parts of this future tense. And we have the number one, the simple future. Y 
It is a verb that's used to talk about things that haven't happened yet. So in this case, we are going to use the simple future to talk about things that um, haven't happened yet, or maybe it's going to happen, or we uh, try to do something in the future. So in this case, we are talking about actions that haven't happened yet. So we have some examples. And it says, this year, Then we'll, this is the auxiliar, read, we're in peace. It will be hard. But she is. Do it. So we have here the auxiliar that we are going to use for this uh, structure. In this case, we have the auxiliar will and the verb. And it determines that we are going to do something in the future. This year, in this case, we have this uh, phrase that also helped me to understand that I am talking about the future or sometime in the time. This year, Jen will read War in Peace. It will be hard, but she is determined to do it. Tenemos varias cosas que podemos ver en esta frase. Tenemos una eh, frase al inicio que nos está determinando el tiempo en el que va a suceder una acción. Luego tenemos el auxiliar will que nos va a servir para el futuro. Tenemos el verbo también que nos va a eh, determinar ¿verdad? la acción que se está llevando a cabo o se va a llevar a cabo en el futuro. So in this case, we are talking about action that will happen in the future and we are going to perform them. When, maybe we don't know, but we are going to do it in some time in the future. And it says that use the simple future to talk about an action or condition that will begin and end in the future. So in, it's obvious that we are going to do something in the future and it will end in the same tense. But how to form the a simple future? How to form the simple future? In this case, we have the structure. And the formula is, Will plus root form of the verb. So we are going to use the will and the root form of the verb without changes. It doesn't matter if the subject is singular or plural, the formula for the simple future doesn't change. In this case, we are not going to use the rules for the third person singular. In this case, the, um, the auxiliar, it's helping me to uh, make this sentence in future. So it is not necessary to change the verb, but there is another way to show that something will happen in the future. And we have another formula. And it says, we are going to use the verb to be um, is are plus going to plus the root form of the verb. So in this case, when we are talking about the future, we have two uh, structures to do it. We have the wheel. And we also have the going to. So we have two structures for this uh, future. We have the first one that is the, the will plus the root form of the verb. And then we have the second formula that is the am um, is are 
plus going to plus root form of the verb. The going to construction is common in speech and casual writing. Keep in mind through that it is on the informal side, so it is a good idea to stick to the wheel construction in formal writing. En este caso tenemos dos cosas importantes acá. Cuando queremos eh, escribir o hablar de una forma casual y un tanto informal, vamos a utilizar el going to. Pero si queremos ser más formales a la hora de escribir y de hablar, vamos a utilizar el will. Así que el going to es más casual, más informal y el will es más formal. And now, formula for the negative part. Negative. We're going to do it like this. Will plus not plus the root form of the verb. Very simple. And when we are going to use the going to in negative, we are going to use am, is, are, plus, not, plus, going to, plus the root form. Am, is, are, plus, not, plus, going to, plus a root form. And for the question part, we have the structure that is will plus the subject plus the root form. And for the going to, we have am, is, are plus the subject plus going to plus the root form. So in that case, we have uh, the uh, structures for this uh, simple future. We have the positive, the negative, and the question formulas to create sentences in future simple. That's very necessary to have the formulas because having them, it's easier to create sentences when we are writing or when we are speaking. Then after that, we have the formula for the simple uh, future. We have the future perfect. We have another one. This is the second part of this tense. Future perfect. It is a verb.
So we have that this is a verb tense used for action that will be completed before some other point in the future. And also it says that the future perfect tense is for talking about an action that will be completed between now and some point in the future. So in this case, we can say that in this um, kind of tense, it is something that it's going to begin now in this moment, and then it will be completed in the future. Para este future perfect, estamos diciendo que tenemos acciones que van a ser completadas um, antes de algún punto específico en el futuro. También decimos que es para hablar acerca de una acción que va a ser completada entre ahora, en este momento, y algún punto en el futuro. Así que esta acción comienza en el presente y termina en el futuro. We have an example, a, a very large example, and it says, imagine that your friend Linda asks you to take care of her cat for a few days. Where she gone? Uh, she's go. She goes on a trip. She wants you to come over today at noon so she can show you where to find the cat food and how to mash it up and the bowl just arrives so that Fluffy will deem to eat it. But you are busy this afternoon, so you ask Linda if you can come at eight o'clock tonight instead. So in this case, we're um, going to talk about this example. It says that uh, you have a friend and she asks you to take care of the cat because um, that friend is going to be on a trip. So you have to go to her house at some point in the day, but you are very busy on your uh, work and you ask for uh, be in that house at eight o'clock. And the, the friend said, no, that won't work. At eight o'clock, I will have left already, she said. What does the future perfect tell us here? It tells that Linda is going to leave for her trip sometime after right now, but before a certain point of, in the future, eight o'clock at night, she probably shouldn't have waited until the last minute to find a cat sitter. So in this case, we're talking about that at that time, the friend is going to uh, be in the trip. So the, the perfect future is telling us that uh, she is going to leave for her trip sometime after right now, but before a certain point in the future. Nos está diciendo en la estructura, ¿verdad? Que ella se va a ir eh, en este momento, ¿verdad? Su viaje. Pero eh, básicamente la otra amiga va a llegar en un punto determinado cuando ella ya no esté. Entonces va a comenzar una acción en el presente que va a terminar en el futuro. Ella tenía que irse temprano, luego la otra amiga tiene que llegar, pero ella no puede esperar. So we have the formula. We have, we'll have plus the past participle. In this case, it doesn't matter if the subject of your sentence is singular or plural. The formula doesn't change. In this case, it's also like the other. An example for this future perfect. Yes, I will, I will write one of these examples. So don't worry. So in this case, it says, when to use this uh, future perfect tense. Sometimes you can use the future perfect tense and the simple future, we can use both. Um, in these two sentences, there is no real difference in meaning because the word before makes the sequence of the, ev the event clear. So we have the example here. We can use, the future perfect, and also we can use the simple future. And it says, Linda will leave before to get there. 
And we have the other one. Linda will have left before to get there. So in this case, we have both. In the first one, we have the simple future. Linda will leave before you get there. Linda se habrá ido antes de que llegues ahí. And then we have, Linda will have left before you get there. Linda se habrá ido, habrá, se habrá alejado antes de que tú llegues ahí, llegues a ese lugar. So in this case, we can use them um, for creating this kind of sentence. So in this case, it's just about the verb or the uh, uses of the verb that is the change in the sentence. So the number one, is the simple future and the number two is the future perfect. But in this case, it says without preposition, such as before, because in this case, before is a preposition or by the time that make uh, the sequence of events clear, you need to use the future perfect to show what happened first. So in this case, we are going to show what happens first? It is, it is a sequence or of events. In this case, when we're not going to use this uh, uh, tense, the future perfect, the future perfect is only for actions that will be complete before a specific point in the future. In other words, the action you are talking about must have a deadline. If you don't mention a deadline, use the simple future tense instead of the future perfect tense. So in this case, we are going to make this clear. Para utilizar este, este eh, tense, este tiempo, tenemos que tener una fecha o un tiempo específico o un eh, fecha límite para hacer esta acción. Si nosotros no tenemos esta fecha límite, este tiempo específico para terminar nuestra acción, no podemos utilizar el eh, futuro perfecto, sino que utilizaríamos el simple future. Porque en el simple future no tenemos un tiempo de entrega, no tenemos un tiempo límite, no tenemos un eh, tiempo específico para terminar la acción. Pero en el future perfect, si sí tenemos un tiempo específico. So in that case, when we have a specific time to end the action, we are going to use the perfect tense, the, the future perfect tense. But if we don't have this um, deadline or a specific time to end the action, we are going to use the simple future. The deadline can be very specific, eight o'clock, for example, or it can be like next week, but we need to have a time. It can even depend on when something else happens. After the parade ends, it just has to be some time in the future. So we are going to use some specific uh, phrases to give this time. And how can we do it? This is structured negative. We have that is very easy because we are just going to add the not between will and have. So in this case, we have will, uh, I mean, negative. Then we have will plus not plus have plus the verb that it says in past participle. So this is the negative part. And we have the example. We will not have hidden hidden breakfast before we get to the airport. Tomorrow 
morning. So we have here the structure. And the formula for questions. Wheel plus subject. Plus have plus the past high symbol. Then we have the number three using the future continuous tense. It is a verb tense. That indicates that something will occur in the future and continue for an expected length of time. And we have the formula, wheel plus B plus the present participle. We have here, that is the root verb plus ing. That it says the simple future tense is a verb tense that is used when an action is expected to occur in the future and be completed. But in this case, uh, we are going to use this future continuous tense to talk about or to indicate that something will occur in the future and continue for an expected length of time. So, esto es algo que vamos a indicar que algo va a ocurrir en el, en el futuro, pero va a continuar por un periodo de tiempo. In this case, it says that the future continuous tense is for action verbs only. It is important to know that the future continuous tense is only used with action verbs because it is possible to, to do them for a duration. Action verbs describe activities like running, thinking, and seeing. A steady verb describes a state of existence like being, seeing, and knowing. To use the will plus be plus person participle construction with a steady verb would sound very odd indeed. Again, with this structure, we are just going to use the action verb or the dynamic verb. In this case, we are not going to use the steady verbs because it is not uh, working with this kind of uh, tense. So. It's important to remember that we have the action uh, verbs and the society verbs. And in some cases, we can use this kind of uh, verbs that talk about the existence or something like that. So we have the last one for the verb uh, tense topic. That is the future perfect continuous. It is a verb tense that describes actions that will continue
we have the future perfect continuous and it is a verb tense that describes actions that will continue up until a point in the future. And we have the structure will plus have plus being plus the verb present participle, that is the verb root plus the ing form. So in el último de los eh, tiempos, verdad, o los tenses del future, que es el futuro perfecto continuo, es para describir acciones que van a continuar eh, hasta cierto punto en el futuro. When we describe an action in the future perfect continuous tense, we are projecting ourselves toward in time and looking back at the duration of that activity. The activity will have begun sometime in the past, present, or in the future, and is expected to continue in the future. So in this case, we are going to projecting ourselves in that situation in the future. And maybe this uh, action uh, began in the past, maybe in the present, or even in the future, but it's going to continue in some time in the future. So we have the 12, we have 12 uh, tenses. We have four for the past, four for the present, and four for the future. So we are going to end with this topic of the verb tense with the future perfect continuous. Now we are going to uh, see some expressions that are the expression of time that we are going to use with these uh, verb tense that are very useful for creation of sentence of or where we are talking in some time in the past, the present or the future. So we have the expressions of time. Tenemos las expresiones de tiempo, que son estas expresiones o frases que vamos a utilizar al inicio de muchas de las oraciones que vamos a crear con los verb tenses en el pasado, presente o futuro. So, We are going to do it like this because we are going to divide them in the uh, past, present, and future. So for the past, we have yesterday, last week, an hour ago, Recently, a little while ago, a long time ago, in the past, and the last one, this morning. So in this case, we are talking about some uh, um, phrases that can help us to create the time of the sentence. Estamos hablando de oraciones o palabras o eh, frases que nos pueden ayudar a darle un tiempo a nuestra oración. In the first one, yesterday. Ayer, estamos hablando del pasado, last week, la semana pasada, an hour ago, hace una hora, recently, recientemente, pero que ya pasó en el pasado. A little while ago, hace un poco de tiempo atrás. A long time ago, a, a un largo tiempo atrás. Eh, in the past, en el pasado, or this morning, because it's something that happened in the past, en la mañana. So, for the present, we have Now, or in this case, we have today, we have this week, now, as we speak, at this moment, these days, nowadays, at this time. And for the future, we have some expressions and we have tomorrow. We have next week.
in an hour. Soon, in the near future, eventually, later this evening. But we have some specification about this kind of sentence that we're, or phrases that we are going to use in the past, in the present, and in the future. And it says, time expressions usually, usually, it is not always, usually go at the end or at the beginning of a sentence. And we have some examples. We have yesterday. We have here the word yesterday that is a time expression. Yesterday I went to school. Then we have another one, I, that is the same, but with some changes. I went to school. yesterday. So in this case, the time phrase uh, or, or the time expressions, it is not like always it is at the beginning or at the end of the sentence because we can use it in both um, structures in the um, beginning of the sentence or at the end of the sentence. So we have this example, yesterday I went to school. I am making or letting people know that I am talking about something that I did in the past. So in the second one, I went to school when? Yesterday, in this case, I am marking the day when I went to school. Para las expresiones de tiempo, no tenemos como una estructura específica que siempre lo vamos a hacer de esa manera sino que puede ir al principio o al final de, las, de la oración para marcar, ¿verdad? Esa dinámica que tenemos con esta time expressions. And it is not like we are going to use it in the same place all the time. Then we have another example. And it says, this week, I'm going to New York. And the same, I'm going to New York this week. So we have at the beginning, and also we have at the end of the sentence. And we have all the popular time expression that we are going to uh, develop the next uh, day that is tomorrow, but I'm going to give you the first one. Other popular time expression. And this one is a uh, very used and is in the morning. And we have an example. When I wake up, in the morning, I like to drink coffee. So we have the sentence. When I wake up in the morning, I like, in this case, I use another letter. I like to drink coffee. So we have other popular time expressions. But tomorrow we are going to see the other popular time expressions and then we are going to develop another topic. And now it's time to end this session. So we are going to see each other tomorrow. So have a good night. And 
we are going to stop right now. See you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Bye. Tomorrow.